Hello everyone, how are you? My name is Ignatius Asasira and I just completed medical school at Makere University for six years. Actually, there are five years, but we had, you know, this COVID-19 experience and it ended up becoming six years. But yes, I was doing Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery and um, I'm making this um, shooting, this documentary for my friends out there to share my experience, you know, in sharing, we get to learn, we get to know who we are, we get to empower and impact communities out there. And there are very many young people out there who are just like me, who are in first year, second year of med school, and even in other schools, it may not necessarily be medical school, um, who may be naive and are worried and are curious how am I going to go through med school. My journey started in 2017. I joined medical school as a young, naive, small boy. I was really tiny. <laughs> uh, from Kabale, coming to Kampala for the first time. Oh my God, seeing these traffic lights and jam. And I was really scared. I had a lot of uh, inferiority complex. But um, uh, fast forward, we go through the first two years of med school. They are really a bit hard and challenging. But um, one thing that kept me moving as a person is the fact that I was too fast to make good friends. And this is something I want to emphasize. You know, at campus, campus life has so many things. It's like a, a buffet, you know? It's you to choose what you want and what to live. So I don't want to say that I made the best choice, but I think I made a good choice. I didn't, at no time did I uh, regret the people I met and these students, you know, you reach at campus and you meet your colleagues from different schools, the traditional schools, which is good, and they challenge you to become a better person. I remember in my discussion group, I used to uh, lead the discussions, yes, but I always was challenged by the confidence which these students from other schools were really presenting. And um, Fast forward, I come to second year. So in my second year, I say, okay, now, you know what? I want to try out something new, something outside med school, something outside academics. Let me try out politics, because I was always a leader in church. I prayed from St. Augustine Makere as a Catholic, um, an ex -Canadian. So I come up and I say, you guys, I want to become a GRC School of Medicine. GRC is a Guild Representative Council. So you represent the students in a, like a Guild Council. But I remember that that year it was really too tight uh, because we were about seven people in the race. But I said, okay, I'll take up the challenge, I'll take up the competition. And um, I remember I reached a point out of naivety and I made this poster, hi guys, please vote for me because I already told my mom that I won. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> and it was a really good experience and um, I want to inform all the student leaders out there. One thing I really, really want all of us not to forget is the primary goal of why we came to med school. It was primarily academics. So as we go along, people tend to like sacrifice, for lack of a better word, the leadership, uh, the academic pathway, and they, you know, they are taken up by power and authority, and they want to be untouchables kindly try to play balance it's not easy from personal experience i remember when i was just joining politics my cgp was really good it was maybe around four point something but when i joined that semester my god it was trauma it was a fall that i had to even up to now until you know recovering from the side effects partly because I, I didn't get someone tell me what i was going for but also partly because I was just like any other person exploring politics in, you know, at campus. But anyway, fast forward, I go through um, second year, the clinical start, the third year, fourth year, fifth year. And it was really a good experience, you know, meeting the patients. Please go for call. Don't go for call, go for night call, go for morning call, you know, spend an extra time on the wards, learn those procedures. They really help. I remember in my third year when I was in my obstetrics and gynecology rotation. So my very first time to deliver a woman. Remember I was from a seminary, I had not seen these things, you know these things. <laughs> so in the very first Friday of the rotation, like the first week, I'm moving out of the hospital from theater. I had stayed with a friend to assist in 
in theater and it's around 11 p.m in kawembe national referral hospital so as i reached the gate i find this lady she had gotten labor pains from the gate and they saw us they said oh those are the wasao everyone keep calm the consultants have come you guys i was in third year i had never never delivered any woman i didn't know but i used to observe for the first five days in i was on the wards so these guys will come just the same so please that the mother is here screaming i had left only two nurses on the on the wall up and there were so many mothers who were in labor who couldn't go back mother the, the baby's head was already showing had already presented so what was i to do i said okay you guys you know what I told my friend, please run back to the ward and inform the sisters about what's happening as I try to do something here because we can't all run away. Well, you know, initially, my, my friend I was with was like, if I Ignatius, let's run away because we can't manage this. But I said, I'll take up the challenge. Eh? I was inspired by Ben Carson when I was in my, in my high school to do medicine. So let me be that Ben Carson of this night. If I die, I die. <laughs> I go there. I deliver the baby. Baby came out, cried immediately after birth. Mother didn't have any tears. She wasn't bleeding. I delivered the placenta. And we were still there. One of the consultants was moving out of the main gate. And thank God she came. She asked me, Ignatius, where is the baby? I had handed over the baby to one of the standard, uh, bystanders. And the guy had moved away. They said, do you know you can be in prison and your career can end right away from here? Oh my God. Uh, the story is so long, but first one, we found the baby, mother went, was okay. And it was my very first experience to deliver a mother on the streets, just by the streets of Kampala in Kawempe. So third year goes by, fourth year, I come into um, still leadership. But now I come as a president for the Medical Students Association. And uh, even when I took the highest position, I didn't forget the importance of discussions, of academic uh, ward rounds, going for these uh, mini rounds, teachings. I was a member of the Makere Medicine Society where I later became their president. And at all times, I really tried to make sure I play a balance. You know when you become a leader, now you're going to be called out of the ward, hi, come and attend this meeting, hi, there is this conference, come and represent the students. By the end of the day, keep asking yourself, is this what i want when you are a student in Makere university there are two things you need to do before you leave this university one what is the university doing for you building your emotional academic spiritual uh, financial um, and relationship status very important but also what are you doing for the university this is our mother university it's our alma mater, Makere University. Makere, we build for the future the great Makere. Great, great and mighty the walls around thee. Great, great and mighty the gates beside thee. Great, great and mighty the walls around thee. Great, great and mighty the gates beside thee. This moment is when I won the race for President Makere University Medical Students Association. It was something that I had dreamt of. Oh my God, it was a very tight race. But I thank all the students who interested me and I hope I represented you well. It was actually a very short term of office, just three months. But at least up to date, I still see uh, the results. My worst moment, hmm, I'll tell you in summary. It was really so bad. After now I think about it, I feel like crying. So in my first year, I attended a session where students who had gone for exchange program to Yale University in the US were sharing their life stories. And I was like, wow, I must be like these guys when I reach my fourth year. So in our fourth year, we do electives. And one of the electives are international placements where you apply and you go to represent the university for a month, two months on a scholarship, you know, in the US, in Austria, in different parts of the world. So I said to myself, I must work so hard, you know, and make sure I represent my college, my university. Fast forward, I reached fourth year. I knew everything. I knew the procedure. I knew the protocol. I even already knew the university I wanted to go to. Okay. Oh, you choose, like uh, when you're applying, you apply with a particular university of interest. 
you guys had made research. I didn't even, to make matters worse, I didn't even contacted eh, some of the professors in that university, asking them, tell me about the university. How's the schedule like? Eh? I wanted to feel like I'm already there. Like, you guys, I was there. Yeah. They made a call. I applied. Previously, it used to be a requirement of a CGP of 3.6 and above. And then you, you are subjected to an interview, oral and written. But in our year, I, because of COVID, most countries had, you know, cut down travels. So there were very few universities. And so the administration had to, like, tighten the selection criteria. And they said they needed the CGP of 4.0. You guys, I had a 3.99. I applied. When they made a call and they said, Ignatius, you don't qualify. I said, but first wait, there is an exam which is not yet in the system. A second year exam. Remember, this is fourth year. A second year exam. I went to the department, begged the head of department, please upload this exam to the system. I had a 74. The CGPA rose to 3.9989. You guys, I did it with a round of figure to go to four. I can never forget that day. But it was one of my best days as well because it taught me that naturally any good system is not going to lower its expectations. I was president by the other time. I thought, since I'm president and I have some grades, uh, you know, my medical school, those professors are going to be so nice and say, hey, Nishas, you know, you come at mama. <laughs> they looked at me like, here, it's cream, they're a cream. The system is not going to lower its standards to accommodate you. You must tighten. You know, that was my biggest lesson. And I actually loved that experience because it, it helped me, you know, learn that knows a part of life and um, to also aspire for something bigger and greater. Yeah, I, that was really my... <laughs> I had other few bad moments. Like, um, I remember during a strike at Makere University, I almost almost got a bullet you know but of course tear gas all over the place i was staying at university hall you know it's one of the gentlemen but yeah, the girls from uh, mary stewart and uh, africa we used to go and visit them but uh, med school was really an enjoyable moment i also loved um the porridge nights you guys porridge nights hey if you're not yet in macquarie university when you reach here look for porridge nights i don't know if they are still there but i think they are so we used to like go and visit the girls and they prepare porridge and then we take together with bread you know that ambiance of taking porridge <laughs> it was a good experience then very important my god saint augustine Makere, the catholic chaplaincy he made my stay awesome these people helped me to keep on track you know at campus you can easily get lost i told you it's a buffet you choose what you want so we used to go for beach bashes thank you father joseph andungo <laughs> i know you're listening <laughs> father joseph andungo is a chaplain at saint augustine he always gave us free beach bashes you go and you know and mingle <laughs> you go and mingle and but of course keeping the catholic virtues and growing up really to become responsible men and women of this country Okay, uh, truthfully, playing a balance, a work-life balance between student leadership and your academic and personal careers or personal goals is hard. And I want, I must, let me use the word warn those who have that dream. Please go for leadership. Go for uh, politics, stand, contest. You know, sometimes you lose, it is okay, I've lost before. Sometimes you win. But um, for so many years, and I don't remember, I don't have the statistics of head, but so many guild presidents of Macquarie University do not usually progress well down their academic careers. Um, and I'm using guild president because that's like the biggest position. I'm not saying I'm I'm like the best and I'm outstanding and you guys are my role model. No, I'm just really sharing my personal experience because when I saw it, I said no, I don't want to be like them. I, I need to learn how to play a balance. And I used to do this in two ways. One, my days would be programmed. From eight to five was academics. Eight to five, you call me for, um, I hear there is a, 
an outing. There is a, a summit for medical students. I, I later became the vice president for the Federation of Uganda Medical Students Association. That's all the medical schools in the country. You get a call from Ministry of Education saying, hi, come here, there is a meeting. I would try to make sure I prioritize the ward rounds. I prioritize bring my write-ups. I prioritize attending the mini rounds and those presentations, discussions. People, make sure you get discussions. They helped me. Discussions helped me. My God. I don't know how I would survive if it was not because of the discussion. Because you would go in a discussion and someone starts speaking and you're like, eh, Ignatius, <laughs> you are the most unsayer student. After that, I would go in my room and burn my books. <laughs> and then I had supportive uh, friends, my roommates. Please make sure you get supportive friends, but also be supportive to your friends. And uh, the other last thing regards to leadership, as a as a man or as a gentleman, you know, you get into power and you know everyone wants to come to you and you feel like yeah, I'm on top of everyone, you want to step on people. Stay humble. Stay humble, keep praying to God to give you the spirit, you know, to decipher between what is right and what is wrong. You know the first college president, you're not the first guild president, you're not the first minister of health of Macquarie University, and you want to be the last. So stay humble and learn to accept mistakes. Maybe something very significant. There are people in this university who have been in these streets for years. Those are lecturers, administrators. Please work with them. You know, there is this notion that uh, when you're a pro, uh, a pro, administrate administration like if you're a student but like friends with administration you'll end up siding with them and not representing the students cause well i don't think it's true me i actually look at it from an angle that if i'm pro vice chancellor Macquarie, it would be easy for me to negotiate with him for a student's cause if the students are complaining of something that's how i looked at it and that's how i did it of course maybe there's some people whom i had or i didn't do right along the way we are sorry. I am sorry. But we pick the lessons and we get moving. We have a bigger career ahead of us. And we are going to be the next generation leaders of this country. But it starts from now. But play a balance. Prioritize. Go and read about the Ace and Menga matrix. See what is important and what is necessary. And give your time accordingly. If there is any last piece of advice I would love to give a first year student, medical student, engineering student, law student, any other student, and I will borrow uh, this from my mentor, Dr. Sabrina. Thank you very much. Dr. Sabrina is a pediatrician here, yeah, a lecturer at Macquarie University Medical School. She loved to say, um, summarize this into A, B, C, D, and A is ask for what you want. B, means be who you say you are c is care for others and d is there to live your life and uh, for my own uh, piece to all those who are watching this is be you don't reach at campus and you want to be someone else you want to put on you know the very nice shoes which just be you or of course aspire to be a better person, spiritually, physically, emotionally, take care of your health, people. Make sure you work out. Yes, do the eating and, you know, at campus, people love a bunch of eating, but try to make sure you live a healthy life. But very importantly, guys, please network. Your network is your network. Like people you meet here at campus, you're going to journey with them the rest of your life so grow your networks try to go out into these academic seminars pay con for conferences don't say me i'm a student i'm broke spare some time pay for those conferences and attend them and if you can sell some little money if you're a medical student there is something called uganda medical association join uma join the uma circle join the independent associations like association of gynecologists of uganda Emergency Care Society of Uganda, if you're interested in emergency medicine, if you want to become a physician, there is a whole association of physicians of Uganda. If you're a lady and you're in medicine, there is an association of Uganda female doctors. Join those associations, participate in their activities. You'll thank me later. Thank you.